protective finishes, and wood care products designed to turn your house into a beautiful home. Minwax makes and keeps wood beautiful. Hmm, I gotta get me some of this copper gutter. Well, one of the brilliant chapters on this old house was written this week when the copper gutter and downspouts arrived, and they are the work of Augustine Crookson, who manufactures the system. Augustine, show us what you got here. Uh, we manufacture a half round system, it's more historically correct than the standard gutters to fit historic type houses. Mm -hmm. Now it seems very heavy as well. It's heavier, it's also harder. Um, the material the standard, itself the is The copper harder. itself, correct. And it seems wider. Um, it's wider, it's the same capacity, and it's easier for the to capture the water off the roof. Okay. Now, uh, where is this piece going? That's going above the front porch. Well, let's see it go up. All right. So now you've cut the piece, and it's time to install the end caps, right? That is correct. We screw them in to hold them in place with stainless steel screws. But that's not going to hold the water. No, uh, that's just to hold it. Now we'll, after that, we'll solder to, uh, to seal it. Hey, my solder jobs don't look like that. It's an acid core solder. Um, it already has the flux built into it, and uh, it'll seal it forever. Well, this bit looks tricky. Yeah, we're going to use a hole saw to cut a hole in the low side of the gutter so we can put our outlet in, which outlets the water to the downspout. Well, let's see it. Here Chris is going to screw in the outlet. Um, same principle, screw it in, then we'll solder it for the ceiling aspect. Now, do you normally install gutters? Uh, no, we're, uh, it's a special event for us. We're doing this for this old house. We are based out of Michigan, and we mm -hmm. ship nationally. And you drove all the way out here to do this? It's a pleasure. So I guess we're ready for the roof. We're ready. Let's go up. I should point out that the porch roof is going to be clad in those copper shingles we saw Tommy install last time, but not before the staging and the ladders come down. Wouldn't want to hurt those. You all ready? We are ready. We've got the fascia brackets mounted. These are made out of red brass. They're an open curl bracket. We have different styles. Good and sturdy. Lag bolted into the rafter tails with stainless steel lag bolt. All right. And now the gutter has a little clip in the back here. Is that what this thing is? That's it. It clips in the back. System. And then how do you secure it in the front? Uh, we have a uh, machine screw that will drill a hole through there and tighten it up from the front. Let's put them in. Now, for the last several minutes, Augustine and his crew have been installing the last element in the system, which is the downspout. And this is a very nice detail. Yeah, a spring hooks onto the uh, bracket, and it's nice because it can be uh, removed if you need to paint it. Mm -hmm. Now this is a real shiny color now. How long will it take to turn brown and then green? About six months for it to turn brown, and depending on the exposure to the weather, about 10 to 15 years yeah. to really get green. Well, after seeing this segment, I know a lot of our homeowners will want to consider purchasing one of these systems. How much can they expect to pay? Um, for all the components in a copper system, you're looking around seven or eight dollars a foot. Plus installation. Plus installation. But it lasts forever. Forever. Augustine, thanks. Thank you. Mm, here's somebody's lunch. Ah, mm. Christian, Susan, you guys are the homeowners. What are you doing digging through the dumpster? Oh, well, here's one. What? Great. <laughs> Tommy had a work crew on the site yesterday cleaning up the work site, and yeah. today we had the tile guy in and realized we were missing some of our most precious tiles. So inadvertently, they tossed them all in the dumpster, exactly. huh? Exactly. So is it really worth digging for them? Yeah. These are uh, mother of pearl. They're some of the most expensive tiles on the job, and at this moment, Every penny counts here. <laughs> well, while you are mining for tile, take a look at a scene we shot last week out in Salt Lake City. It's all about where the copper comes from. So I'll, I'll give you a hand. Dive hey. in, dive in. <laughs> well, we made it. We're in the heart of the Ochre Mountains, just outside of Salt Lake City. And this is some of the most beautiful country in the country. And look at this. This is gold to a skier. An early season snowfall. Some old mining equipment here. 
Small rail cars from the early 1900s. That's something. Now, we're supposed to meet up with our tour guide, Bill Williams. Maybe this is Bill. Bill? Hi, Steve. Hi. Welcome to Kennecott. Thank you. Thanks for inviting us out. Let me give you a hat. I want you to be safe while you're here on your visit. And this is the mine? This yeah. is it. This wow. is the Bingham Canyon mine. That's unbelievable. And what you're looking at is the second largest excavation in the world. Well, I don't really have a sense of the scale. Well, where we stand right now, we're about a half a mile above the bottom. And then when you look at it side to side, we're a mile and a half to two miles across. And what did it look like originally? Originally, when the miners first came here, it looked like the mountains around it. They found some gold and silver up there and began picking away at the mountain, and this is what you see today. Wow. So the idea is to go deeper, you have to terrace it out and make the hole wider? That's right. Our plan here is as we go deeper in this mine, this mine will also get wider. Well, you think they'd mind if we went down and had a closer look? I don't know why not. Great. Okay. Well, this place is unbelievable. I have never felt so small. It's a really big place, isn't it? Yeah, well, especially when you see the size of those trucks. Yeah, Steve, each of those trucks carries 250 tons of ore just like this. So this is copper ore. This huh? is copper ore. How much does this weigh? This weighs about a ton. And when you're all done processing it, how much copper do you get out of it? I knew you'd ask that question. It'll produce about 12 pounds of copper or two plates just like that. Well, you got to move a lot of material to make a living here. How much is this worth on the open market? On the market today, it's about $4. Wow. So let's go look at one of their shovels, can okay, we? OK, let's go. Before the shovels can do their work, the ore has to be blasted out of the mountain. We drove over to the other side of the pit to watch. So you think we're far enough away? Yeah, we're safe here. What is this machine? This is a rotary drill. This drills a hole in the ground about 12 inches in diameter and about 60 feet deep. It's the first step in the blasting process. And where will the blast take place? The blast will occur over there by that shovel, actually, on the bench above. You can see another drill just like that one positioned on the far end. He's gone through and drilled a series of holes, and those holes have now been loaded with explosives. What do they use? We use a mixture of ammonium nitrate and diesel fuel. Not dynamite or TNT? No, it's, it's an effective blasting agent just with the diesel fuel and ammonium nitrate. Now, how do they set it off? At the bottom of each hole, there's a booster. Mm -hmm. Those boosters fire in sequence. That triggers the, the blasting agent and the, lifts the ground. Well, this I got to see. The guy that presses the button is standing over by the pickup truck there, Steve. He's the master blaster. The master blaster. Yeah, he's in charge of the whole thing. <laughs> wow! Oh, look at that! Wow, that is impressive. It is. But that it is. doesn't fly in all directions. No, it didn't. Steve, the whole idea is just to shake the ground really good, but not to throw it everywhere. So now what do you do with all that material? Well, the next step will be a shovel will move back in again. He'll load that material up, put it in the trucks, and send it to the crusher. Let's go look at that. Okay. Well, the trucks are nearly enormous, but this shovel is gargantuan. Yeah, that's one of the bigger shovels we have here. How much can it pick up in one scoop? That bucket holds 100 tons. Is that right? And how many of those will fill up the truck? About three. Wow. So how long will one of these trucks last? Oh, they'll last us four years if we're lucky, five if we take really good care of them. But generally, they run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So we wear them out pretty fast. Uh, how much does it cost to replace them? About a million six hundred thousand for a new one. What do you do with the old ones? Well, we run them until they won't run any longer, until we get their useful life out of them. Then we salvage them out. Look how the truck just settles, settles down yeah. with 100 tons of material going into it. So how big are these tires? It's about 15 feet tall. And how long do they last? About six months is all, and we have to change them out. And how much do they cost? Yeah, they're a lot. Of, they're very expensive. They're an expensive part of our operation, and you don't want to get a flat with one of these guys. <laughs> I guess not. Triple A won't help you. They don't help you at all. Well, Bill, if you took away the electric poles and the roads, you could convince me that we were on the surface of the moon. It's pretty barren, <laughs> it's, isn't it? It sure is. You know, I see some staining on these rocks here. Is that, is that copper? That is. That's a form of copper oxide. Yeah. So what accounts for it being here to begin with? Well, thousands of years ago, this area saw a lot of volcanic activity. And associated with that volcanic activity was a lot of high-temperature liquid, which contained copper, 
in the gold and the silver that we find today. Were there ever any uh, solid veins of it? There were, and that's what the early day miners took out of the yeah. area. So this would be considered a low-grade ore? This is a low-grade ore, and it's actually quite characteristic of the industry today. Yeah. Is there a lot of this stuff in the world? Oh, there's probably a handful of operations that are this size. Uh -huh. But the point is, without the buckets and the trucks and so on, you couldn't have this mining operation. That's right. That's right. So now where are you taking me, Bill? Steve, this is the primary crusher. You remember where those trucks were loaded by that shovel? This is where they come to dump. So this is a control room with computer monitors and so on. But what's going on uh, here in this sort of pit? Well, this truck is going to dump into a giant funnel, and at the bottom of that funnel is a huge mortar and pestle. Uh-huh. It just grinds it all up, huh? It's going to take those big boulders in that truck and reduce them to the size of grapefruits. So where does it go when it's done? Steve, after it finishes grinding that rock, it drops onto a five-mile conveyor belt, which takes us to the next step of the process. So what's all this, though? Well, this is the other end of that five-mile conveyor. The mine is over here in the background, and that ore comes across, moves across the belt, and is deposited in this stockpile. Why do you bother to cover it? Well, that's one of our other anti-pollution measures that we do here to protect the environment. Mm -hmm. The ore then settles down through this stockpile, moves under this roadway through a series of conveyors and into this other building for further processing. Well, let's take a look at that. OK, let's go. So you've taken me from the Stone Age to the Space Age. That's right, Steve. This is the control room for the concentrator. The concentrator? Yeah, in this facility, we control, among other things, that large spinning mill that's out there in the distance. Mm -hmm. You remember the ore that we had in the stockpile? Sure. It comes in on that conveyor belt, kind of looks like this. Well, we mix those that ore with some of these balls. Which are heavy. Which are very heavy. Yeah. And they tumble around inside there for quite a while until they result in a product that looks like that. We then take this size ore, combine it with some smaller balls. You see that mill in the foreground. Or that little one there, yeah. Tumble around in there for a little while, and we end up with another product. That looks like that. So you mix water in with it. Somewhere. That's right. There's water added in. All right. So how do you get the copper out of this stuff? Well, that's the best part. I want to show you that next. I cannot believe the amount of capital equipment that's required to make copper. I'll never take it lightly again, I'll tell you that. Now, this looks like it's straight out of James Bond and Goldfinger. Well, Steve, there's a little bit of gold in here, but it's mostly copper. What's happening? Well, you remember that slurry that we saw up in the control room? We mix it with some diesel, we pass a bit of air through it, the heavier particles settle out, and the copper attaches to the air bubbles and it floats. You're saying that's copper? That's copper. Go ahead and reach in there. Really? Yeah, won't hurt you. Ooh, that is weird. So how pure is this? Well, that's 30% copper right there. Well, that seems pretty good. Well, it is good, but it's not good enough. We're going for a higher quality copper. How do you do that? Well, we take it over to the smelter and light it on fire. That I gotta see. Well, we'll do that tomorrow morning. Great. Okay. Well, I slept like a baby last night, Bill. That's good, Steve. You're gonna need all the energy you can muster. We're gonna have to cover a lot of ground today. Terrific. So is that the Great Salt Lake? That is, but we're not gonna sightsee on the lake today. We're actually gonna go into this plant. We're now 17 miles away from that facility where you got that stuff on your hands. Mm -hmm. Inside the plant, a rolling drum 100 feet long heats that liquid concentrate to around 1,100 degrees, drying it into a fine powder. Then, just like Bill promised, the powder is set on fire inside this four-story tall flash smelter. A continuous stream of the powder is sprayed in, along with oxygen, and is ignited by jets of natural gas. The result? superheated gases containing sulfur, slag, which is mostly silica and iron, and something called matte, a mix of molten copper and sulfur that's 70% pure. The matte is then flash cooled with water and sent through the entire smelting process once more. That creates a molten copper called blister copper, 99.6% pure. The blister is sent into a huge rotating wheel and cast into large plates called anodes. Now, how many of these do you crank out a day? We produce about 3,500 anodes from this facility every day, Steve. And are they ready to be turned into pipe at this point? Not yet. Not yet. There's gold and silver in these anodes. 
gold and silver. That's right. About we made about 250,000 ounces of gold last year. So we'd like to get that out before it becomes wire and tubing. I'd say so. Yeah. How do you do it? We do it at the refinery, and that's our next stop. Let's go. The 700-pound anodes go by the mine's own railroad to the refinery a few miles away. There, computer-controlled, laser-guided trolleys take these racks of copper anodes over to acid baths, where they're interleaved with plates of stainless steel and lowered in by overhead crane. What happens? If you remember from your high school chemistry, if you put copper and steel in an acid bath and pass a current through it, that copper will jump right off that anode and onto this stainless steel. And that's what's happening here in these tanks? And that's what's happening here in the tanks. The plates stay submerged for 10 days, collecting a thick jacket of pure copper, 99.99% .99 pure copper. A special machine pops that jacket off the stainless steel plates. Then it's bundled up and shipped off to other manufacturers, where it becomes the pipes, wires, and gutters used in our old house. And what about the gold and silver? Well, the gold settles out in the form of a sludge, and we collect that sludge up, send it to the precious metals mm -hmm. plant, and that's where we make the gold. Well, it's a very impressive process, I must say. Thanks for showing it to us. Thanks for coming, Steve. We're glad now, to have you. Can you show me the gold? Steve, if I showed you the gold, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> now, the only copper you're likely to see out here in the kitchen 